So I've been up to some mischief on Code Wars, and I was thinking about solutions and how you might be able to create some code that causes the tests to pass uh, without actually implementing a real solution um, so that you could technically submit that as a solution and essentially just copy and paste the code to every single test and um, you know get them all to be solved when they're not really solved. Now I don't condone actually doing that but I thought it was a interesting question and it's an opportunity to explore some of the internals of Node, um, specifically the require cache. Uh, so I thought it was a pretty cool little solution, inverted commas. Um, so I'm going to get into that now. So no doubt as a Node developer, you will be aware of this require uh, keyword to load a module. Um, now what happens when you do this is it inserts the loaded module into something called the require cache. And it is literally an object you can access at the require.cache uh, location. So what I'm going to do here is obviously I haven't implemented this solution at all yet. And I'm just going to console log the require cache. So you get this massive object that gets output and I'm just going to copy and paste that into VS code just so that I can look at it better. So you can see 4,000 odd lines of uh, stuff in this object that has been uh, output and it's essentially a list of um, key value pairs. So you get a key which is the path to the thing that has been loaded, and then an object which represents the module. You'll see here that we're requiring the chai test um, module. So we should expect to see that, considering it's been loaded up front uh, in our require cache. So let's have a look. Yeah, you can see that it's loaded stuff from this chai module. Now looking through all these matches, these kind of tend to be sub modules inside Chai. And I think the main one we're interested in is index.js, which is kind of the main outermost thing uh, that is exposed in the Chai module. So this is the module that uh, corresponds with the outermost exported file in here. And you can see this here is an assert. So this is the list of exports. And here you've got a thing that is exported called assert. And you will see here that we're requiring the chai module and we are getting that assert um, piece of functionality from the chai module. So for the sake of interest, why don't we loop through the require cache and find that module and output it so that we can inspect it a bit better. So then we're just going to get uh, the key value pairs of the require cache using object.entries and they will be captured by key and value. And we're only interested in the one that ends in chai slash index.js. And once we find that one, so we're going to ignore all that aren't that one and just log out the value. And this is what we got. So uh, this is the key or the ID. Um, and here are the exports. You've got util. You've got config, assertion, and here is the thing that we're using here, assert. And you'll see all of the different assertion um, functionality that is present within Chai. And specifically, this test is using strict equal. And you'll see that somewhere. Uh, da, 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 strict equal there. Hmm, interesting. 
what if now that we have access to this object here, we override it? So I'll write that code now. So all we're doing here is accessing the object that we found earlier uh, by looking for this key, um, accessing the exports, the assert functionality, and uh, overriding the strict equal function um, that is created on this object. Um, and just overriding it with a, a function that returns true always. So when the tests run, it calls strict equal, and all that's doing is now running this function and returning true. So it completely ignores all of this um, and will just return true to say that our tests pass. <laughs> Ta-da, passing. Now, sadly, when you run the full attempt, it doesn't pass, but we can fix this too. Um, so, of course, when you run this test, uh, it's just running this code in here. And when you attempt, um, it's running some code that we don't have access to. It's running something else. So we have to be a bit more cunning. Now, initially I thought, well, hey, let's just paste that up here. And hopefully that'll work, right? Because it's going to um, update the require cache and do everything we need. But there are technical reasons why this doesn't work. So if I test, even with these tests, um, it doesn't work. Now, the reason for this is because of the order that the modules get loaded. Now, by the time this test gets loaded, um, it's loaded before the code for uh, this section here. So the Chai module hasn't been loaded yet at the time that this code is running. So when it loops through the require cache, it doesn't find this, and therefore it cannot update this function. Um, this is where a little bit of ingenuity and creativity can come to our aid. And you can just do it in a set uh, timeout function uh, with a delay of about one millisecond, I think it is. And that will then inject the code into the correct module at the correct time. If voila, it works. And if we run the attempt button, that also works. So technically I could now click this submit button and it would be an accepted solution uh, to the challenge, which is kind of cool. Right there, now that we're armed with this meta solution, um, why don't we just dive into one of the hardest possible challenges and just solve it instantly with our little solution. So this one uses Chai which is, oh, I'm ranking up, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, let's test it. Attempt and passed. Now I'm not going to submit because clearly that would be in bad faith, but I think this is quite a neat little, um, so a neat little tool. Uh, occasionally, this can be useful. So frameworks like Jest, um, Mocha, um, Chai uh, use this kind of require cache manipulation to uh, allow us to test things. So when you mock a module, what it's actually doing uh, under the hood is messing around with the require cache and inserting um, its own behavior as like a wrapper around um, the actual functionality that's being tested. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit of a window into how that works and how it can be manipulated for good, let's hope. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this a useful and interesting little demonstration around the node require cache.